Rise, man. The Force will be with you. Always. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Star Wars Meg, here to give you another Mandalorian Season 2 update. We have some really exciting news to get through today guys, but before I get into it, please may I ask you to hit like down below to subscribe to my channel if you're brand new, and also hit the notification bell to be alerted every time I post a new video. So without too much jibber jabber, let's get into it. Our first news article is the big one, and it's the reason you probably clicked on this video, and it concerns Rosario Dawson. So it is possible that Disney have accidentally leaked the fact that that she will be playing Ahsoka Tano in this current season. So this is from Games Radar and they state, a Disney Plus social media account has officially confirmed Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka in Mando season two. In a now deleted post by Disney Plus's Indian Instagram account, fans were given an idea of what to expect later on in season two, thanks to an image containing some trivia. The post featured a simple question and answer. What does Ahsoka Tano's live action avatar look like? The response reads, Rosario Dawson is set to play the famous Clone Wars Jedi. See a screenshot of the post here. The post has since been removed, which likely means the news about Dawson as Ahsoka wasn't meant to be confirmed yet, or we're all wrong and Dawson won't play Anakin Skywalker's former Padawan. As previously reported, Rosario Dawson's casting was revealed back in March, but Disney plus the Mandalorian team and Dawson herself have yet to confirm anything official. So this is pretty big news guys, because if you remember the Instagram account of the German Disney Plus a couple of months ago, they confirmed that Timothy Oliphant, who obviously played Cobb Vanth in yesterday's chapter nine, would be in season two. And they also stated that Rosario Dawson would appear. So usually I would say take this with a grain of salt, but there is just more and more evidence now that points to the fact that she will be playing Ahsoka Tano later on in season two. I don't know if she'll appear in chapter 10, but we can certainly expect her to make a cameo in this season. And now our second article of the day comes from Den of Geek, and this one talks about the Easter egg of the Crate Dragon Pearl that we saw in yesterday's chapter nine. So in their article titled Star Wars The Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 1 Easter Eggs Explained, they go through different aspects of the episode. Now in my full breakdown yesterday, I did speak about most of these, but this is one that I didn't really get into because it's not something I knew what it was at first. And there were a lot of arse wipes who said, oh, well then you're not a true fan. Sorry to say this, but you don't have to have read every expanded universe, played every game, read every comic to be a true Star Wars fan. So let's leave toxicity out of this because if you want to call me not a true fan, then you do not know my channel and you don't know what I'm about. And also I hate the term true fan, you know, because there's a lot of gatekeeping in this community. If you like the prequels, if you like the original trilogy, if you like the sequels, or you just like one of those trilogies, or maybe you just like one part of the Star Wars universe, whether that's books or comics, whatever you're into, if you like anything to do with Star Wars, you're still a Star Wars fan. You don't have to know every little aspect of every little Easter egg and every little character and every little this and that. You are still a Star Wars fan if you enjoy this franchise. So I'm sick of the toxic fans. Just cut it out. There's no need for it. Now, I'm sorry I went on this little rant, but I did need to say something about it because I'm sick of the shit I received based on something that I just simply didn't know. And there you go, I said it. I did not recognize it as a crate dragon pearl at first. But let's talk about this marvel of an Easter egg. So they write, Cobb and Mando spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to kill the crate dragon, stalking both the people of Mos Pelgo and the Tusken Raiders who live in the Dune Sea. Crate dragons first appeared as a massive skeleton in the Tatooine Desert in Star Wars A New Hope and The Mandalorian finally brings this monster to life on screen. So once it was defeated, the Tusken Raiders were celebrating over the fact that they found the Crate Dragon Pearl. So the Crate Dragon Pearls were concretions that could be found in the bellies of Crate Dragons, a species of large creatures that could be found on Tatooine. Those pearls were exceedingly rare and valuable. Crate Dragons had a very long lifespan and during the course of their life, they would ingest stones to assist in digestion. The corrosive digestive fluid would break down and eventually dissolve the rocks. Rarely a stone would contain a kyber crystal that would remain in the beast's gut being refined over the life of the dragon until it formed a smooth, small sphere. Because the pearls were formed from kyber, they could be used in lightsabers and that was one of their uses. So now we move on to another article and this is from Forbes and they write, did the Mandalorian really need to resurrect a Star Wars legend? So I found this news article to be fascinating because everyone's talking about what they thought of The Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 1, but this article talks a little bit more in depth about the need to bring back a major Star Wars character like Boba Fett in The Mandalorian in the Star Wars universe. 
So they write, yes, that scarred man was actor Tamara Morrison playing Boba Fett as we know from the prequels, which had the actor play Jango Fett. At least I assume he's playing Boba, it would be extremely weird if he was just an aging clone or something. Something that many fans enjoyed about this episode was the fact that it fitted neatly inside Star Wars history with plenty of easter eggs that did not distract from the simplicity of the plot. It's really fun to see iconic moments like the destruction of the second Death Star from the perspective of ordinary folk stuck on backwater planets without a Jedi around to help out. The show itself leans on Tatooine a little more than it should, perhaps, but in general, I think The Mandalorian has walked the line between nostalgia and novelty extremely well. So why bother bringing back Boba Fett? We already had our stone-cold bounty hunter with Mando, a fresh hero for a new age modelled after Boba, but a little more tender-hearted, a little more vulnerable. So then he writes, the show works really well when it acknowledges the history of Star Wars without being slavishly devoted to it. Those iconic moments and characters are practically myths already fading into the background, as the bitter reality of life after the Empire proves more important than Luke's great victory. But a fan can't help but worry that the Mandalorian might embrace the cheap fan service of Disney's sequel trilogy with the popularity of the films eclipsing the new story. The return of Boba Fett is intended to get people talking, fans feverishly speculating and by that logic it certainly succeeded. I was happy to leave Boba behind in the Sarlacc pit, his bones long dissolved, his durable armour the only remaining remnant of the legend. We'll see where the story goes from here. There are more pressing questions than the fate of Boba Fett and they concern our new characters. We know less about Mando than we do Boba. So about this article, while I see this guy's point of view, I have to very strongly disagree because in my mind, it's not cheap fan service and feel free to disagree with me if you think I'm talking a load of rubbish. But The Mandalorian is premised on the idea that it takes place after Return of the Jedi and before The Force Awakens. So inevitably, a lot of the characters from the original trilogy and species that we already know are going to make their way back into the show. That's the whole point is to kind of complete our understanding of what we know about this time period in the Star Wars timeline and fill it out with things that are familiar as well as introducing new concepts. I think it works really well to bring back characters like Boba Fett and I would also love to see a final arc for the character of Ahsoka Tano especially in live action form but I do see the point of view that there might be too much fan service and let's be completely honest chapter 9 was for the fans and it was loaded with easter eggs and references that the diehard fans of the franchise would understand and appreciate. So that is my news update for the day, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give me a big fat like, subscribe to my channel if you're brand new, and also consider becoming a patron of mine on Patreon. For either two or ten dollars a month, you can help to support my channel and get exclusive access to content that is not found here on YouTube. And I will see you next time. Have a fantastic rest of the day, no matter where you are in the galaxy. Have a good one.